Tracking, alerting, protecting. WKYT News starts now with breaking news. New this morning, we are tracking a deadly shooting out of Lexington this morning. Well, to get right to that story, thanks for being with us on WKYT. Lexington police are investigating multiple angles of the investigation right now, and details are still coming in. What we know right now is this. Police responded to a shots fired call around 2 o'clock this morning on Transylvania Park at East Maxwell Street. It was there that officers say they found a person shot. Police say the victim is a U.K. student. Right now, there is an active scene in the Cardinal Valley. Valley neighborhood that is some distance away. We're continuing to track developments in the story. We'll have a full report coming up at the top of the hour on WKYT this morning. Again, good morning to you. We're glad you're along with us on this Friday. Obviously, uh, off to a rough start to, with mm -hmm. that uh, circumstance. Yeah. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Rebecca Smith. Hope you're having a nice start to your Friday. We're headed into the weekend. The other big story of the day, of course, is weather. And let's check on that. Meteorologist Micah Harris on duty. Good morning. Hey, good morning, guys. And we'll catch a big break today and tomorrow. Today, there's still Still a small chance of rain, but nothing like what we have seen the past couple of days. There you are on First Alert Defender live radar. Still that front to the north of us. And until this front can move through, we'll be very mild and also have at least that small chance at a couple of showers. Right now, it's just sitting there just to the north of Grant and Pendleton County. 50s and 60s outside. Pretty good feel. And we look toward the afternoon, 76. This is going to be a really nice feeling day. And also, still, that small chance of rain. But we get rid of it for one day for the weekend. Show you which day that is coming up. All right, thank you. Let's get to the news. Well, this is a sign of just how much rain we've had. Cave Run Lake in Rowan County has reached record levels. And the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers says more heavy rain could cause flooding downstream. With the lake at record pool, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers is warning folks that more rain could cause more problems for the nearby community of farmers. They say if rain does overflow the spillway, the town could see high water levels like it did earlier this month. Well, the grounds are wet already. It won't take much, much rain to bring it up and get back out of the out, out banks. And uh, we just have to learn to live with it. That's about all I know. The engineers say the dam is holding back extra water until nearby streams can handle more of it. They say people living nearby should be prepared to leave if the water gets too high. In Madison County, a mudslide that shut down a road has now been cleared. Dispatchers tell us Tate's Creek Road north of Richmond reopened last night. The road's been closed since Tuesday. Emergency management says heavy rains caused mud and trees to slide off a nearby hill and onto the road. Crews have been working to clean the mess up ever since. And do not forget, you can always track severe weather even when you're away from your TV on WKYT.com. You can take control of an interactive first alert defender soon right up into your neighborhood. You can also download the First Alert Defender radar app for your iPad or smartphone. Just search for WKYT in your app store. A Pulaski County man accused of beating his girlfriend to death is now admitting to the crime. Johnny Hendricks pled guilty to murder yesterday. Last fall, police say he beat Monica Wells in front of her eight year old son, then put her body in a sinkhole. Wells's parents say they agreed to the guilty plea because the boy would have had to have testified at a trial. He's in counseling twice a week now. This would have killed that kid. He couldn't have stood it. Prosecutors have recommended Hendricks spend 25 years in prison. He will be sentenced on May 21st. Also new this morning, Lexington police are investigating an armed robbery that happened overnight. Police say just after midnight this morning, two women walked into a shell station on Nicholasville Road. They say one of them was armed. The two stole cash and merchandise. That's according to police. They have not made any arrests. Two teenagers face charges after an online threat caused quite a scare in Whitley County. Police say a crisis center in Iowa received a message saying someone at Whitley County and a school there had a gun and was going to shoot children. The crisis center contacted the school district. Schools were put on lockdown. Police did not find a gun at any school. They say they traced the message to two students, 19-year-old Nicholas Greenlee and 16-year-old a 16-year-old. Uh, the Whitley County Sheriff says one of the teens said the message was a joke. But nobody out there was laughing. We take this stuff very serious, and the school does also. Investigators say both teenagers have been charged with terroristic threatening. 
Police in Fleming County arrested a man they say was cooking meth and growing marijuana. State police say 23-year-old Christopher Adams faces many drug-related charges. They say a tip led them to a home on Goddard Road. Once there, they found an active meth lab and an indoor marijuana growing operation. Eastern Kentucky University has suspended some football players who were involved in a bar fight. Richmond police released surveillance video of the fight that happened in January. Police say the fight involved both EKU and UK players. A grand jury did not indict anyone, but EKU suspended its players who were involved in the fight. They did not name them, but Colton Scurry and Patrick Groffrey have been moved from the EKU football roster online. As for the UK players, Coach Mark Stoops says the situation was addressed and handled internally. The time is 4.36 on WKYT this morning. A Franklin County judge has ruled against Kentucky's ban on same-sex marriage. Franklin Circuit Judge Thomas Wingate ruled yesterday in favor of two same-sex couples who were denied marriage licenses. He ruled the ban violates the right to equal protection. However, that ruling has been put on hold because the U.S. Supreme Court will hear arguments on marriage bans in Kentucky's federal district later this month. A federal judge struck down down Kentucky's ban last year, but a federal appeals court overturned that ruling, sending the case to the Supreme Court. The developer of Lexington Centerpoint Project says he has found a buyer for $25 million in bonds and could be close to the deal by the ne early next month. Dudley Webb says he is disappointed in how slow the project has progressed in the seven years since the block was cleared. Comments came in a letter sent to WKYP after he declined an on-camera interview. Webb says it should take 15 months to build the parking garage, the office building, and two hotels and apartments. City council members we talked with are anxious to see some progress at the site. I still think it's on everyone's mind being in the center of downtown, but um, I think uh, there's been very little activity that we've seen and heard about. Uh, hopefully in the next 30 days, we'll all have an update no more about what's going on. Webb says construction will begin as soon as those bonds are sold. He says when it's finished, Centerpoint will include a Marriott, a 10-story office building, and 75 apartments. To read Webb's letter and to see WKYT's full investigative report on the project, just go to our website, WKYT.com. Well, it could save lives in case of an emergency. Folks in the Lexington Fire Department's Citizens Fire Academy are receiving some hands-on training involved in an actual fire. Last night, they practiced their skills at a plane crash simulator, and as you may imagine, it was pretty intense. WKYT's Monique Blair has the story. All right, here we go. These people are not real firefighters, but they're learning what it takes to be one. Well, beforehand, I was like, ah, it looks pretty easy. Anybody can actually do it. It's not as easy as it looks. Offering the course twice a year, the Lexington Fire Department gives students a hands-on approach at how to use the jaws of life, how to operate a breathing apparatus, and how to flow the hose lines, just to name a few. There's many aspects of the department that um, when you're in this class, you get to see those. For student Sean McStay, it wasn't until he got up close and personal with the fire that he realized how tough the job really is. It feels like you're in the middle of an open field, pitch black, can't see your hand in front of your face. So, And dragging 220-pound dummy out is harder than it looks. Tonight, during the 10th week of the 11-week course, students were able to see and feel what it's like to fight a real fire. For student Mary Cutlett, she took the class for a more personal reason. Yeah. My husband's a firefighter, and I kind of wanted to see what he does. And uh, I've gained a lot more respect for what he does. Respect for what he does and what he has to wear. I don't know how they do this all the time because this gear is incredibly difficult to move around in. McStay, who plans on applying for the Lexington Fire Department, Good summed girl. up his experience with the Academy in three short words. It's breathtaking, really. In Lexington, Monique Blair, WKYT. Looks pretty fun. The next Citizens Fire Academy class will begin in August and it is free. For more information, go to our website, WKYT.com. Fun, maybe, but obviously hard work. And <laughs> important in case there. of an emergency. No question. Time this morning is 439 on WKYT, and we're just getting started. There's a lot going on this morning, and we'll keep you right on top of things. Uh, Miss America, they say they're much more than a beauty pageant. When we return, we'll have more on Moms Every Day, who's sitting down with this year's title holder to discuss an upcoming day of service.
And we're looking outside now. I can't rule out all rain chances, but we are going to see a bit of a break today and tomorrow, especially tomorrow. It looks great. Rain returns on Sunday. I'll show you all that coming up.